Welcome to the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. We've got a fast-paced hour of fishing, hunting, and conservation covering the nation and the Northwest, including 13 extra minutes of local content you'll only hear on Seattle's Sports Radio 950 KJR. It's Saturday morning, and I'm glad you're here because we've got some great local content for you today. At the bottom of the hour, John Kaiser is coming back. He is going to tell you once again about the Lawrence on the water program where he offers personal instruction on your boat to help you get the most out of your electronics and you'll want to stick around for the end of our program because we'll be checking in with steve leonard the owner of steve's guided adventures he's been fishing the columbia river near the dalles for pre-spawn walleye and he'll tell you how it's been lately but first let's tell you as we do every week what's hot and what's not Brought to you by your Puget Sound area Sportsman's Warehouse stores. And one of them, the Federal Way Sportsman's Warehouse, is offering three weeks worth of basic fly tying classes. It starts today at noon from 1 p.m. and goes the next two Saturdays beyond that. The cost is only $20 for all three classes. You'll want to call the Federal Way store as soon as they open this morning. See if there's still openings, but if there are. And if you want to learn how to tie flies and do so with a solid foundation, get yourself down there today. Checking in with NorthwestFisherReports.com poster, J.C. Hennessy had a great morning of fishing at King County's Beaver Lake on February 21st. He says the action was constant for big rainbows, and he caught his five fish limit in under two hours. He was using bait, fished off the bottom, out of the boat, and reminds his fellow anglers that if you are bait fishing, the limit is five, even if you catch and release your fish. You can check out his photos of those chunky trout with his post at northwestfishereports.com. In the saltwater, Marine Area 6 was fishing the best for blackmouth anglers, according to Creel Checks last weekend, with anglers at one Port Angeles area ramp averaging 1.2 Chinook each. Things also picked up for anglers on the Bogey, the Kalawa, and Quileute rivers out of the Olympic Peninsula, where they were averaging one or more wild steelhead caught and released on the 20th and 21st. Another place to go for steel Oregon, the Tillamook area streams, and for that matter, just about all of the major coastal streams up and down the Oregon coast are fishing better than they have all year for winter steelhead right now. What's not hot? are the March 1st trout openers in eastern Washington. Continued snow and cold weather in February froze up most of those lakes out there around Grant County and southeast Washington. However, things should thaw out soon, and the Quincy Valley Chamber of Commerce is having their ninth annual trout derby at Burke Lake on March 23rd, just in case you want to plan a trip for a reason to the Quincy Lakes area for trout. You can get details at their website at quincyvalley.org. Turning to politics, that bill that would eliminate gill netting throughout the state passed out of committee, but not until being tweaked. Now, that bill will just eliminate gill netting by commercial gill netters on just the Columbia River. This would affect just a few licensed gill netters operating in Washington State, but may well prove helpful in saving wild Chinook and steelhead, which die in these nets every year. The bill still has a long ways to go before it becomes law, but it made it over its first hurdle. A couple of bills that appear to be just about dead include two introduced by State Representative Sherry Appleton from Polsbo. Her bills that would have outlawed the use of hounds by the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife to track down problem cougars and bears that have attacked pets, livestock, or even people has not passed out of committee nor has her bill that would stop the lethal removal of wolves doing the same thing throughout the state of Washington. Thank goodness common sense has trumped wild environmental rhetoric when it comes to these bills. And now you know what's hot and what's not, not only with fishing, but with politics too, right here in the Pacific Northwest. That's your first local shot of the outdoors. Now let's see what's going on across the nation. Wetlands are some of the most important ecosystems on Earth, but our wetlands are quickly disappearing. Find out how you can help. Join Ducks Unlimited today. 
Ready for more local fishing and hunting? You got it. It's the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. Right here on Seattle's Sports Radio 950 KJR. For your next local shot of the outdoors on America Outdoors Radio, we're talking to John Kaiser, very well-known angler here in the Puget Sound region. And he has got something I think you're going to be interested in, especially if you bought some Lawrence Marine Electronics and are trying to figure out how to make it work a little bit better than what you're deciphering from the user's manual. John, what do you got for folks? Well, we have a new service called Lowrance on the Water. So we cover uh, Lowrance and Simrad products. And what's really cool about it is we'll go out in your boat, take your equipment, show you how to run it, tune it to the type of fishing that you do, and you're going to get 100% better. you, you got to remember these units are built to go anywhere in the world and fish. So we have kind of a unique fishery here in the northwest that's dialing these things in. You, if you're the guy that only sees the fish arches on the box when you buy the unit. Yes, we're gonna, that's me. <laughs> we're going to take care of that for you. You're going to be at 100% more improvement. You're going to be able to get that unit. You're going to learn the little tricks to it, how to make it work, and then all the cool stuff it does, you know, the manipulating stuff. We'll get it set up for you. Show, Make sure your equipment's mounted right. It's getting the right voltage. you got the right transducer mounting on it. And then we go out in the water after we do that, and we show you what the fish look like. You know, so it's it's kind of a unique. Nobody else does, and... Uh, a lot of the guys that do it, man, 100%. I've, I've had, I can't tell you how many guys are getting ready for the derby coming up, and they're like up in the islands like, hey, I need you to check my boat this week, you know, because, I mean, just that little bit makes a big difference. You know, I think it's a, a great idea. You and your co-founder of this project, Larry Hutchins, down in Oregon, uh, have come up with this. And, and what does it cost? Because w- no matter what it costs, you know, the payoff for years to come seems to me it's going to be worth it. A minimum is two hours, which is 200 bucks. And, it's, and we'll go to you within a certain mile range for that. And, uh, you know, that includes everything. If, if we get done with the tuning part in the first 45 minutes or an hour, then we'll spend an hour on the water, you know, and, and actually show you what you're supposed to be looking for. So it's, it's well worth it for the investment. What's the website where folks can find out more and get some of your time on the water? LawrenceOnTheWater.com. Website again, LawrenceOnTheWater.com. That's LawrenceOnTheWater.com. If you have a Lawrence fish finder and you want to figure out how to use it to its best ability and get it tuned so it's going to work for years for you at the highest level, this is worth the investment. Thanks, John. Thank you. NorthwestFishingReports.com is the Northwest's largest fishing reports website, featuring well over 50,000 fishing reports, videos, articles, and more, all 100% free. Catch more fish with Northwest Fishing Reports. Log on today. Don't leave yet. We've got one more local shot of fishing and hunting to wrap up the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. We do indeed have one more local shot of the outdoors for you before we leave you today. We're checking in with Steve Leonard. He's the owner of Steve's Guided Adventures, and he's one of the few guides that's been braving the elements to take clients fishing over the last couple of weeks. Steve, I understand you've been going after walleye on the Columbia River. Yeah, I have been. Last uh, week and a half here, I've been switching over gears and started getting that pre-spawn walleye time. And yes, I have. What part of the Columbia are you fishing right now to target these walleye that can get very big indeed? I'm fishing the Dow's Pool all the way from the Dow's Oregon up to the John Day Dam at this point in time right now. However, they're biting all the way through the Columbia River system um, on the east side primarily. So that's why I go to the east side. They seem to start biting a little bit early in this pre-spawn time, but that's where I've been spending my time here the last week and a half. Are you seeing some of those big pre-spawn females that are over 10 pounds yet, or are you still kind of wading through the smaller males? I'm uh, going through the smaller males. We've got a few, oh, 23, 24-inch females we've released. We just kept a few of the smaller males. I haven't got anything over six pounds yet, so I'm just kind of working these areas where they're coming back and forth in some deeper water. I know that there's different areas you can get into some bigger fish that's going to be coming up or starting to come on, but at this point in time, I have not yet with the five days I've fished. That's okay. I'm pretty sure your clients are pretty happy with a whole bunch of eater walleye. I know I would be. How are you catching them? It's, It's really cold in the water right now. Are you jigging them up, blade baiting, or what? I've actually got all my different rods in the boat. I've been getting them on jigs lately. The water's been really calm for me. i got a bow mount motor, electric Minn Kota, so i got good bow, uh, bow control and boat control. So I, I love the jig form. However, I do have my worm harness rods. I like to cover some water. If I can't get into them on the jigs, to locate them, to go back on them with the jigs. 
and I do have blade bait that I'm running in the fire tigers and stuff that's been producing a few fish, but more so than any of them, I've been doing the half ounce jig with Nightcrawler. Well, we have got to let you go, but folks, if you want to book a walleye fishing trip right now on the Columbia River near the Dalles, get a hold of Steve Leonard. His website is stevesguidedadventures.com. That's stevesguidedadventures.com. He's been fishing the Columbia River a long time. He knows his business. Great guy to spend time with, too. And if you're looking for a base camp while you're fishing this area, consider the Dalles. There are some great hotels. There's also good restaurants and a burgeoning brewery district, too, that you'll want to explore. Just Google the Dalles Area Chamber of Commerce for that. Steve, thanks for the report. You're welcome. Thank you. And tight lines to you guys. That's all for this week, but don't worry. We'll do it all again next Saturday morning from 7 to 8, right here on Seattle's Sports Radio, 950 KJR.